Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin. Well, hi there, Kevin. And I'm Ralph, behind the camera. And welcome to Cavalcade of Food. Why, thank you. And, Ralph, we're going to do a quickie. A cavalcade quickie. Quickie. Okay. Um, so it's that time of year. It is that time of year, and we've got uh, friends coming for dinner. We're making ribs. Not barbecue ribs. I do them in the slow cooker. And I broil them with sauce. It's on a previous episode. Which is a, if you if you want to see how I make them, it's crock pot ribs or slow cooker ribs, something like that. Um, but there they are. Boy, do they smell good. And so when they're done, and they cook all day, nice and tender, and then I slather them with sauce and put them in the oven under the broiler, and we just love it. So it's not barbecue at all, actually. Um, but that's not, how we like to do the ribs. It's barbecue, but it's not grilled. It's not grilled. Well, and people will tell you it, then it's not barbecue. Okay. So I guess what I'm thinking of is we need to get to the point, yeah. which is you're making a barbecue sauce. We're making a barbecue sauce. Okay. okay even From though we're scratch. not barbecuing the ribs. Okay, I get the okay. distinction. So here's our sauce. Now, um, the, there's a lot of sauces out there, and I use bottle sauce sometimes because uh, it's just a convenience. But if you look at, at the ingredients, most of the bottled stuff has, it might be the first or second ingredient, high fructose corn syrup. Mm. So real sweet, real sugary. Um, and I, we like, I like a little sweetness, uh, but not quite like that. And it's just nice to use ingredients um, where you know everything that's in there. So uh, a lot of sauces also start with ketchup. But again, most ketchups, what do they have in it, Ralph? Sugar. Sugar, or corn syrup, again. So um, what we're doing is, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna actually use just tomato sauce, okay? 15 ounce can. This is just plain tomato sauce, all right? So Nothing, there's no sugar in that? No, there's not, actually. Um, tomato puree and water. Uh, it looks like there's a little salt, a little citric acid, onion powder. That's it, okay? So, um, 15 ounce can of tomato sauce, a 6 ounce can of tomato paste. So, this is our thickener upper too, because you can see that this is just concentrated tomatoes. Um, it's the only thing that's in here, it's just tomatoes. So paste is a quicker thicker upper. <laughs> Exactly, you could say it just like that. All right, so we got uh, tomato sauce, tomato paste. Okay, then I've got one quarter cup here of unsulfured molasses, and I'm going to do it like this. I like this measuring cup for things like honey and molasses yeah. and peanut butter, wet things, gooey uh, things, gooey things. So we got a quarter of a cup of molasses. Then I've got two tablespoons of Worcestershire? Worcestershire Shire sauce. What's this here sauce? What's this here sauce, okay? And you know, that's so great because there's so many ingredients in, in uh, Worcestershire sauce, okay, that, that it adds a lot of depth of flavor. Yes. All right. Now, here, here is our sugar, our sweet. I got a quarter cup of brown sugar, okay? that's going in there. We want a little tang. I've got a third of a cup of apple cider vinegar. So not tang the orange powder. Not, no. Okay. okay. So just, just check. All right. So there's that. So I'm just going to kind of blend this on the saucepan. And then, and by the way, when you're using stuff with, with tomatoes and vinegar, things that are acidy, you want to use a non-reactive pan. That is to say, don't use an aluminum pan use this is actually an aluminum pan underneath but it's it's wrapped in stainless steel oh, okay. so either use uh, glass or stainless steel or enamel uh, coated steel aluminum will darken and it, it interacts with the acid in the tomatoes okay now this is our spice palette look at that you ready I'm ready two teaspoons smoked paprika that smoked paprika will give us a little bit of that smokiness in the sauce. Now, does smoked paprika have a little uh, heat to it? Not really. Okay. No, it's not hot, but okay. it has the smokiness because they smoke the, uh, the, the, the peppers. peppers. 
So um, now if you don't have smoked paprika, what you could use is a teaspoon of regular paprika and a teaspoon of ground cumin because cumin has that smokiness yes. to it. But two teaspoons of smoked paprika. Over here, I have got one uh, teaspoon of dry mustard powder, okay? One teaspoon of garlic powder. One teaspoon of onion powder. A half a teaspoon of salt. A half a teaspoon of black pepper. A half a teaspoon, or I'm sorry, a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne. Well, there's That's, your heat. There's our heat, okay? Then I've got um, a half a teaspoon of ground celery seed. I oh. just love that flavor. Yes. Um, and then this is just a pinch a of cloves. Inch. Of cloves, okay. Okay? So we're going to put all these seasonings, spices, in... I see. In the, in the sauce here. Okay? All in. And we're going to stir that. Then I'm going to bring that over to the stove. And I'm going to, on medium heat, I'm going to let this come up to a simmer. Once it starts simmering, I'm going to put a lid on it, not quite fully, so that some of it can escape. Because we want it to reduce down so just a little bit. Thicken up. Exactly right. It will thicken it up. Um, and we'll let it cook. Once it's uh, simmering, we'll let it simmer for about 15 minutes. And that will be long enough to really dissolve all the the seasonings and, and uh, break down the, the thick tomato paste. And we'll have our sauce for our burrell. So just turn this off. This is simmered now for, oh, 15 minutes, maybe even a little bit longer. You see it's nice and the darkness. Mm. That's from the molasses. And then the thickening from simmering mm -hmm. and leaving a little air. So it's basically done. Um, but you want to taste test it. You want to taste test it at this point. Now I'm going to tell you. Wow. You want to try it? Yes, please. Um, what do you think? I love it. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. I like things a little hot, a little spicy. Oh, so oh. The it's, cayenne it's, gives it a, just a little kick at the end. It's not immediate, though. It's not immediate. The first thing I'm getting is sweet and tomatoey. Uh huh. You definitely. It's that's what I like. It's tomatoey. And it's tangy. Um, the vinegar for the tang is providing the tang. You know the onion and garlic are there, but so is the celery. Um, the fun thing about making your own barbecue sauce is you can flavor it however that's right. you prefer. Like I think if I did it, I would maybe do, try it. I've heard it's good to try with uh, citrus, like maybe an orange rind, uh, oh, orange zest, or yes. maybe more cumin because I tend to like the cuminy, the, the smoky, chili smokiness of cumin. You could but definitely put chili powder. But in this there. is delicious, and I'm, yeah. uh, I'm I'm a big fan. I can't wait to try it on the ribs. Yeah. So you know what? I'm just now, you can make this ahead of time if you're going to be having something that you want to put the sauce on or if you're grilling or barbecuing, you would just kind of let it cool, put it in a, you know, airtight container, put it in the fridge, it'll actually keep for a couple of weeks, no problem. I'm going to leave it here because we want it slather ready for our ribs. We're dressed our ribs. for dinner. I see that. Our guests are here. Now, Ralph, look, here's our that wonderful barbecue sauce that we made. Oh, wait, wait, let's look at these ribs though. So these wow. are country style ribs. So not a slab. They're not, right, they're not like a rack of lab ribs. Um, so, so they're very meaty. What I like about slow cooking them is a lot of the, it rendered almost all of the fat off. I cook it with onions and so I like to put the onions in on this as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm just putting this sauce over. Kind of slathering it over each piece of meat, and then mm -hmm. you're going to put them in the um, in the oven to kind of finish cooking. I'm just going to put this under the broiler. In the broiler, also that they kind of glue it to the exactly. stick it to the. It will it will almost yeah adhere stick to the meat, and it'll get a little crust too, which is nice. Okay, and that's so all there is to that. Do a little taste test, okay. Our friends watching like that. Right? Yes, they do. They like it when we. When we show what things how it comes out, so here's the barbecue here's sauce. the barbecue sauce, 
and you can see and I put a little extra on it because I just like a lot of sauce but there's a little crust here look how it just look falls at the, right yeah, off because of again the slow cooking yes and, oh, and some of the couscous got on there Good. but um, <laughs> which Ralph made and it is fabulous Mm. That face says it all. I think he likes it. Now, the country ribs are tender and wonderful, but I just, that sauce, really with its, it's got a slight kick, but the tomato and the, uh, all the, the different seasonings that we put in. Make it kind of complex. Yeah. Um, it's a little sweet just a little but it also has a little bit of a tank to it which is nice too from the vinegar and a little bit of um, a heat yeah